at this time, this session is now being recorded. Okay. Eccentris, flow sheets. The purpose of this session is to do an overview of eccentric flow sheets, their types, and what is a flow sheet. And we're also, while we're doing this session, we're going to conduct a demonstration of EMR activities in eccentris and documenting inpatient care on a flow sheet. Upon completion of this lesson, the student will be able to what, state the purpose of the Centris flow sheet, list our flow sheets using the Centris, discuss the icons and shortcut keys in the Centris flow sheet, identify the correct flow sheets used for documenting a patient's vital signs, INO and MED, discuss the workflow process for documentation in the Centris flow sheet. These are the objectives for this lesson. Okay, what is a flow sheet? Flow sheet is, in a patient record, a graphic summary of several changing factors. Patient's vital signs, weight, treatments, medications given, and or procedures performed. It serves as a patient care record that documents intervention through the use of check marks and brief notations. Okay, these are the basic flow sheets that are within the eccentris vital sign of uh, eccentris system. Vital signs, temperature, pulse, breathing, blood pressure, labor, patient's contractions, vital signs, fetal heart rate, uh, medications, which is also called a MAR, given meds, holding meds, new meds, in and out, documenting patient's intake and output, respiratory, meds given and breathing treatments, invasive devices such as Foley's, ET tubes, chest tubes, IV, so forth and so on. Treatments, document treatments given by the nursing staff. Um, under note, BAMC has 13 basic flow sheets. Your MTF may have less, your MTF may have more, depending on what specific flow sheets are for, with it for each section. Okay, at this time, on my screen here, I have already selected a patient. And this is a vital sign flow sheet. And as you notice, we have tabs here. And this box is selected due to the fact this is the current time, or selected. Let's talk about shortcut keys. Right click, see a pop of the menu, Alt plus or Control plus, as short keys is uh, shortcuts for actions, like Control plus C to cut text, or Control V or Alt V to paste. Enter tab to enter data into a cell or a field. Tab to tab out through the boxes. Shift plus tab, okay, within fields is to move cursor backwards into a previous field. Directional arrows to move between rows and columns of sheets. Page up, page down to move cursor from one display page to another. And space bar to delete data from a cell or a field. These are very, very useful keys to remember and to instruct nursing staff. Asterisk. Now this is, you're going to know this, on, uh, see this on a lot of, especially on the med flow sheet and uh, any all flow sheets. And asterisk denotes there was a little note pasted to that cell. A turquoise box, previously entered and stored data was later dele deleted. All that tells you is when the box is turquoise, it is the information in that cell was entered then deleted. It just means that any and all changes that are documented into eccentrics. If you go back in, say like you did a vital sign 120 over 80, then you realize that, that was the wrong patient. You go back and correct the data. It just indicates that the data has been changed, which is brings to our next one, reverse video. That means the data was uh, previously entered and the stored data was later changed. So that means like the 128, previous before was changed to 128, was probably 130, 165, whatever. But when you change that to 128 and then hit enter, the system will automatically document that this was changed. The green box. Green box usually as a medication means it's something due. And that is when you do on plan schedule meds when those, when you put down QID, BID, Q4, and put the times down when and where you want it, 
the system will tell you this is what is due at this time. Okay, red box, that means something is overdue. When, the, when there are days when a nursing staff is, too, is busy, 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 and they forgot to give a treatment, med, or document something, the system will let you know that this was due at this on this date, this time. And you can go in there, correct it, and put your documentation. Right angle in bracket means something was started, such as medication. When you do on the already med module and say like a provider says, oh by the way, I wanted you to give this patient Tylenol PRN and he puts it in the order and when the nurse acknowledges that order and starts giving it to it, you will see a right angle bracket and that means it started on this date and time. Left angle bracket means something will stop, such as medication, basically DC. And if the patient no longer needs Tylenol, the nurse can go into that data field or cell, right click, DC, sign off on it, and you will see a left angle bracket. A check mark, check mark indicates that something was done. That's all it indicates. And I will demonstrate that in my demonstration. At this time, is there any questions? Okay, I will continue on. Okay, I have, uh, we're going to go over icon overview. Icons, you will see on top of the flow sheet, there are several different icons. I'm just going to cover the basics. And the first one we're going to talk about is the uh, disk shape icon, which means store changes. Unless you manually click on that for whatever data you entered into the EMR, it will not be changed. What will happen is, as I will demonstrate later, that the centers will ask you, you have data on this EMR. Do you wish to save it? And it will ask you each and every time. Previous page. Previous page button is exactly what it means. If you went from the uh, INO flow sheet to a vital sign flow sheet uh, to a meds flow sheet, when you hit previous page, it'll go back to those modules that you were at before going next, which brings up next page button. There again, you must have opened a page before and then you went back. You can go forward to that next page you were documenting. Refresh page. Refresh page button is exactly what it means. It refreshes your data that you see on the screen. Now be advised and be aware that um, one person can be documenting an INOs, another person can be documenting men on the same patient, but not on the same module. Because that module, say like you want to go into meds and somebody else is document, you cannot go into the meds module because somebody else has already got it. But you can go to the other flow sheets or modules and document. So that's what refresh button is for. Is to, if somebody else is documenting and they saved it, you can bring that data up to your uh, your monitor and refresh it. Enter time, exactly what it means. Enter time button, and I will demonstrate that. Okay, now column. What that means is, if you notice here for this patient that his schedule is at 0907, 0917, so forth and so on. If you were somewhere over here and you click the now button, it will go immediately to the current time and date. Okay, annotation button. Annotation button is you can make a note on any portion of a flow sheet or in the EMR, and that's exactly what it is. View edit history button, and that's what it means. And you can view the edit history of a person's EMR, see what was done, what was deleted, so forth, so on. Describe item button. If you click on an item and click on that button, it will tell you exactly what that item is on a flow sheet. Open notes. Open notes button is exactly that. It will open all notes that were done in this EMR. Open summary screen button. Summary overview of a patient's encounter. Okay, open order button. This is a very important button due to the fact that if you're working like say here, I'm working in my vital signs, and a provider says, oh by the way, I forgot, I need you to order this person an inhaler treatment, 
you can actually go directly by clicking on this button to the order uh, to orders module do the order sign off on them acknowledge them and the provider can sign off on them later and then once you close that module it will bring you directly back to your vital signs flow sheet or whatever module you're working on show high grid that's exactly what it means the is portion grayed out here you can collapse it or expand it by clicking on this button show hide empty rows button that is very important and what that does is like on this row right here where it says percentage SP met since there is no data here or any row there is no data you hit on this button it will collapse those areas start row button start row button is exactly that you can start another row within this flow sheet for whatever reason and end row does the opposite once you're done with that row no longer need necessary needed you can end it okay read monitor button before if this button is grayed out that means it's inactivated that means it, it's not the essential system was not set up to read monitors and that's my warning on this uh, remonitor button if your system is set up and configured to read the monitors then this button would be active you could click on that button you can actually through your screen read what the monitor is seeing at the patient's bedside okay at this time are there any questions Okay, Nurse Nancy will document data on a vital signs flow sheet with check marks and brief notations. What Nurse Nancy will do is she will log into a centris, go to her patient control module and select a unit and a patient. This is my patient control module and we have the admin panel with several notes tabs. As you notice, web links, iPlot, summary screen, orders, notes, flow sheet, status board, and under admin you can search for your patient, admin, transfer, discharge, import data, show staff logs, show visits. So what she did was she double clicked on the test ward because this brings up all of my test patients and then she directly double clicked on Brandon, Kelleen, so forth and so on. Her attending doctor is Dr. Adams and by click, double clicking on the patient's name in the patient data bar here my patient is selected okay there are two ways of selecting a flow sheet in the admin panel click on flow sheets and you notice there are several flow sheets here vitals peds peds vitals vitals period inos meds invasive abg ventilation treatment crt lab and there's more that is one way of selecting a flow sheet for a patient okay the next way of selecting a flow sheet is going to my menu tab bar up here click on flow sheets and you notice I have the same flow sheets lab entry invasive critical lab PACU aquadex but again let me reiterate there are some basic flow sheets and Dampsey has 13 you some other MTS will have more or less depending what their specific requirement is for a flow sheet within the sections of an MTF. So Nurse Nancy clicks on Vital Science Flow Sheets and this is my Vital Science Flow Sheet. Okay. Now at this time we're going to go over the continents of the flow sheet. Here you know this is my section label, my previous and next icons, and here are my tabs for my plotting, O2, pain, PCA. Here's more data, enter now column tabs my data cells here's my scroll bar and here's my summary and label grid and it's, it's a very very uh, simple flow sheet because it, it, it tells you exactly what what the tabs are and what it does okay one of the first things nurse Nancy did was she clicked on a NBP dash s which stands for BP systolic clicked on a data cell and she entered data in the 
systolic and diastolic cell. And by saving it for now or entering data, just click on the enter key. Once that is done, she's going to move right along. And she notices that under the O2 source, there's a small little drop down button. When you hit the drop down button, there are different options for that one line being the O2 source. One is a Romare, two is nasal cannula, three is a face tent, three is T piece bloodline, Venimax for number five, non ring breather for number six, aerosol mask for number seven, ventilator for number eight. Trait call for number nine, um, BiPAP for number 10, and oxygen mask for number 11. You can do this with majority of cells by either right clicking or hitting the drop down. You will have more options. Okay, on this cell for HR source, uh, Nurse Nancy right clicked, and here are several options too or features. You can describe item. You can start a row, stop a row. You can read a monitor. You can auto read a monitor. It means grayed out. It means not active. Annotate. Make a note within that cell. View edit history. Copy forward. Add row. Set frequency. Reset schedule. Set schedule. Okay, and this goes for any flow sheet. What you can do here, you can also, on the tab bar here, or the button bar, you can do two just a matter of preference on how you want to document your vital signs. Okay, what I did though, what Nurse, Nurse Nancy did was she was going to make a comment in that cell by clicking on annotation and she put down monitor BP for increase and that's what she's going to do. Once Nurse Nancy was done making her annotation, she will click on OK. Okay, now you notice that under her heart rate, 77, there's an asterisk. If you see any data cell with an asterisk on it, that means somebody made a note in it. Okay, vital signs can be graphed automatically as long as they're input. Now, when you move from one flow sheet to another or one module unit to another and you didn't click on save changes, essentially it's going to ask you, do you, you have unsaved changes? Do you wish to save changes? Say, click on yes. If you click on no or cancel, any and all data that was entered in the cells will not be saved. Once you click OK, Essentis is going to ask you username and password. Now that's what Essentis is doing is tracking what changes were done on the EMR by date, time, and who was it. So any and all changes that are done within Centris, unless you save it, the changes will not be made. At this time, is there any questions? Oh, I got one. What are the add -ins? The add and st stop row symbols are for starting rows within the sheet. Um, I didn't have any screenshots for it at this time, but um, if you go to your quick reference guide for uh, Ecentris, it shows you some screenshots in there. And that's exactly what it's for. I hope that answers your question. Any other questions? Okay. All right, this time, Nurse Nancy is gonna document some INO output. Uh, her patient decided that he needed to go to the restroom. Now she has to document his urine. What she does is go back up and select to the flow sheet tab and select INO. Now let me go over this flow sheet shortcut keys. Um, the up carrot denotes shift six to hang in a bag. Uh, I did 1000 cc's two days ago. Today my provider said change it to 500 so I hung another 
500 cc's. That's what the carrot's for. At, at indicates what is my rate. Um, 125 for 1,000 cc's two days ago. And today I'm changing my rate to 65 cc's a, um, an hour. And that's how you would denote it in the data cell. Tilde, tilde is a very misunderstood symbol. All that indicates is if my left AC, antecubital, my elbow got infiltrated with my IV, what I did was I started an IV in the right hand. So to denote in my INO, I put a tilde and say right hand. That's what a tilde does. Plus sign. There again, add incremental uh, of output, basically urine, body fluids, whatever. Pound sign. Pound sign is there again, how many bags did I hang besides that 500? That would be if I had my 1,000 cc's patient took it, I'm hanging another 500 bag, I would denote pound two for that. Insert. Um, you can go into any cell that Hey, if you added like 100, 1,000, 500, 100 cc's, and you want to calculate what was given to them at that time, click in the cell, they hit insert, and then your calculated, calculation will, done be, will be completed automatically by a centrist to see how much fluid was given to the patient. And this flow sheet shortcut key is in uh, the quick reference guide for nurses. Uh, if you go to the A site, under a centris, under documentation, you will find the nurse's quick, quick reference guide and it's on page 16 and you can find these shortcuts. Okay, Nurse Nancy is already selected for her patient and INO sheet and we're gonna document. As you notice, we have intake fluids, IV drips, outputs, totals, diaper count, output descriptions, and weights. And all this information you can see here too. Okay, what she's going to do at this time, because if you notice for this patient, their cycle is every top of the hour, 07, 08, 09, so forth, so on. So, but this time she's like, no, I don't want to document for a top of the hour, I want to document now. So what Nurse Nancy does is she's going to click on the enter time icon. This time you can add, you can enter whatever time you feel that is noted for this output. All I've got to do is enter the time, click OK. And you notice what she did was she entered here how much he urinated. And down here by right clicking, you can get specifically what the color of the urine was. Light, dark, pale, clear, cloudy, yellow, amber, tea colored, pink, bloody, blood tinged. Okay, any questions? Yes, ma'am, that is true. Like I said, I'm going, going over some general flow sheets, but like with every MTF with different sections, you will have different flow sheets. Does that answer your question? Go ahead and talk to Mr. Bernie because you have the mic. Or you can send me a little chat message.
Mr. Bernie, I hope, like I said, I answered your question. Uh, let me reiterate. All flow sheets are particular to the their own MTS. There again, some MTS will have maybe up to 20 flow sheets. Some might have less. Okay, let me move that along. All right, one of the other flow sheets that uh, as trainers you will run into and have a lot of questions about is your meds flow sheet, your MAR. Okay, at this time, Nurse Nancy is going to go ahead and document some meds given on Ecentra CMR. And she's going to do it with check marks. And then she's going to show you, okay, how can I order meds uh, when it's pulled out of the air. At this time, Nurse Nancy is going to go to the flow sheet tab, select meds. Okay, meds flow sheet is selected. As you notice, these are the tabs for meds flow sheet. Med instructions, scheduled meds, chemotherapy, bedside glucose, pain, PRN medication, intake fluids, continuous. And if you notice these little left and right directionals, they will take you from tab to tab to tab. Okay, this time a PRN medication was ordered for Ms. Optimality Shirley. And down here in the PRN medication row, Tylenol 325 tab, 650 milligrams means two tabs PRN as needed. So what Ms. Nance Nursey is going to do is going to click on the box and then right click and click on Give Med. Um, and that's real easy. And the system annotates by a check mark that a med was given to include in the row date and time. Very easy. Now, one other thing I want to talk about is right click on the same box and you can click on Home Med. Now, the only thing I have to uh, warn you about Home Med if Home Med is clicked on and used, you must put a statement uh, or reason why the medication was not given. Patient refused, could not find patient, uh, patient couldn't drink it for whatever reason, but an annotation must be made in that data cell to uh, justify why the med was not given. And you can also notice here that we have view edit history, you can also DC it, you can also make remarks, you can also set schedule, reset schedule, set frequency within this box. Well, say like provider comes along, looks at your patient. Oh, by the way, patient has a low-grade fever. I don't want to uh, get him get used to a, a, a Tylenol. I want to rotate some Motrin. And you said, okay. Have the provider put in the order, or you can put in the order. And if it's up to you to put in the order, the new order button, what will happen is the new order button will go into the new order module. You can fill out pertinent information, sign off and acknowledge, and when you close that module, Essentials will bring you right back to your flow sheet instead of patient control module. And you will notice that Motrin, 400 milligram tab, 400 milligram QID PRN for pain was started. Now on that new row button, for now, this is exactly what it looks like because we just started another row. I think that answers Mr. Bernie's uh, question. Okay, any questions? One of the last things we're going to talk about is workflow process. Okay, this is a basic workflow process for nursing staff, but always be remember that workflow process changes from section to section within a nursing, within a MTF, depending what section it is. ICU from PDICU, uh, intermediate ward versus general med ward, so forth and so on. Okay, but a basic workflow works like this. Provider completes and signs orders for the patient and says the patient's going to be admitted. Unit staff at this time will take charge of the patient, 
take him to the assigned bed. At that time, the unit staff is going to complete an initial assessment, documents our nursing admission assessment note. Now, this is where the centrist comes in. The unit nurse or the nursing staff will acknowledge all orders and complete procedures by signing off on the orders within the centrist. And there again, let me reiterate that all the orders must first be put in by the provider. And that's our basic workflow. What is the purpose of a flow sheet? In short, it is to document any and all patient care done, completed on the patient. That's it, real simply put. Okay, during this lesson, we have covered the purpose of a flow sheet, a centrist flow sheet. We covered basic flow sheets using a centrist. We talked about the icons, the shortcut keys, and a centrist flow sheet. Correct flow sheets used for documenting patients' vital signs, INOs, and meds, and workflow process for documenting the center's flow sheet. Any questions? Any questions at all, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, I went real short for on the MAR and yeah, on the time now and meds to just to show you how to use that that uh, those icons. Does that answer your question, Miss Weathers? Um, excuse me. Okay, my apologies. Um, that function you're talking about is you have to see a system administrator to see what version you have for a centrist. And if the button is grayed out, the only other reason I can see is that it, that part of the module unit was not activated. Now, Ms. Harris, is that um, is that the when a new order was done or when a current medication is given? Um, Ms. Oh, so when current medication is given, the new meds grays out. Issue. At this time, you know, I'm going to have to research that. Uh, can you leave on the chat box, can you leave me your email address and I'll get back with you and answer that. Any other questions? At this time, can, uh, ladies and gentlemen, can you do me a favor? If you have any questions for me, can you please leave your email address in the chat box and I will get back with you as soon as I can. Any other questions? Any other questions from the audience? Well, thank you for your attendance. Uh, the recording of this session will be available at the A site. 
and we will get it uh, out as soon as possible. And thank you for your participation as an instructor. I really appreciate that. But those of you who uh, have questions, put your email in that little chat box, and I will get back with you within appropriate time. Thank you for attending.